Well, hello there. This is John Brewer. I'm a Qigong teacher, and I've been this this month completing my fourth full year teaching Qigong here at Wellness Within. And I'm really glad to be here today to provide another Qigong class for you. This will be number eight, uh, videotaped and on the Wellness Within um, YouTube page. So we're going to continue with the idea of 10-minute routines based on the work of my teacher Roger Yonka and the Institute of Integral Tai Chi and Qigong. And Roger organizes his practices uh, in, a, I think, a great way in the sense that they're in four main components. Movement, breathing, self-massage, and meditation. We can also add in sound and visualization or the use of the mind's focus in our practice. So, as I said, I've been working with 10-minute routines because I really want to make this accessible and time efficient and also um, practical and effective. So, we're going to have, in this case today, five different practices and they're going to fit into each, at least one of each of the four components I mentioned. But in addition to that, I'm going to be featuring some sequences or some practices that are part of some sequences. So consider this a preview of coming attractions because it looks like we're going to be able to get back together in person at some point. So I will just give you just a preview of certain sequences that I'll be doing when we can come back live and in person here. So let's begin with a wonderful practice that um, is often called ringing, ringing the temple bell, but which I also call waking up. And let's just do the practice and I'll tell you a little bit more about it as we do. So just start by turning your body, turning, feel your hips turn one way or the other, either way. Notice the spinal twist that you're achieving, but be careful about your knee, don't torque your knee. And then just gently do a spinal twist to the opposite side. Now I say spinal twist, but we're also shifting the weight a little bit, which will also take some pressure off your knee. All right. Now increase the momentum. So your hips are turning and your weight is shifting, and you'll notice that your arms, neck and head go along for the ride. Adjust your stance, it could be shoulder width or a little wider. And just allow your arms to travel around your body, maybe making contact with your body. Just a beautiful warm up. Let's just keep going. It's a great way to start a day even, to warm up your spine, to warm up really your whole body. And when we refer to it as waking up, it's, it's like waking up to a new day. Or maybe transitioning from one part of, your, part of your day to the next. But you can also think of it somewhat metaphorically as we do in the seven precious gestures. It's gesture number one. We think of it as waking up, that we're on this path in life, having all these opportunities, some easy, some difficult, to increase our self-realization and can elevate our consciousness, become kinder, more loving people, for example. Now notice, you can augment this practice by sinking down in the middle and rising up on the sides. That may cause your hands to rise up a little higher in your body we're tapping the body, so now we have a movement along with tapping the body, so it's a form of self-massage. And we can add the mind's focus by visualizing healing pulses of energy entering our organ systems, releasing stagnation, contraction, generating more free flow of energy. So this is really one-stop shopping, this one simple movement movement, self-massage, and of course, 
Always having deep, flowing in-breaths and out-breaths. And having our mind focus, not in the past or the future, but right in the present, makes it a moving meditation. So just slowly, gently allow yourself to come back to stillness. And take a f just a few seconds to notice how you feel inside your body. This practice is very beneficial. Physical therapists often prescribe this practice to create strength and flexibility in the spine. So, hope you get a chance to practice it. There is a little video link for the practices I'm sharing today. There's one per practice so that you have this resource you're looking at now and the links below as well. Recommend them both. All right, let's move on to a breathing practice. In the video, link below, it features my teacher, Roger Yanka, and he calls it the three breaths. Just simply three breaths. Deepening the breath, doing three deep breaths, is a complete breathing practice and it's so flexible you could do it while you're you know maybe watching television or even driving um, anytime during the day maybe a minute or two for some deep breathing so what we're looking for is a complete in-breath so on this first in-breath breathe in and feel your body your belly expand as your diaphragm drops down and then keep breathing in and have a sense of the breath, your breath rising all the way to the top of your lungs. And then exhale very slowly and completely so that when you get to the bottom of the exhalation, let your diaphragm, let your stomach press in so you release all of the air. And then a nice big deep full in breath all the way to the top of your lungs and then just breathe out slowly, very, very slowly. And our third one. What could be simpler? And what could be more beneficial? It's just a wonderful way, just deepening the breath to strengthen the parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and digest function of our nervous system. Yes, we need to have our sympathetic nervous system ready to go to meet challenges, get things done, achieve goals, but we want balance with the rest and digest function of the parasympathetic nervous system and this breathing really helps that. And little by little as we do this practice, we may start taking fewer breaths in a minute, which is something to shoot for. Five to seven deeper, longer, fuller breaths has many benefits to the nervous system, to the brain. Then the rapid breathing of 12 to 14 breaths most of us take in a minute. So I highly recommend three deep breaths. Ah, taking a moment to notice how you feel after taking these three deep breaths. All right, very good. Well, let's move on to our next practice. This one is from a sequence called the Eight Brocades. It's brocade number one. The Eight Brocades is one of the most valued and treasured sequences in all of Qigong. If you were to go to YouTube and, and type in Eight Brocades, you'd see many different teachers offering their version of it. Uh, there's, a link, um, that, there's a link to this one as well uh, that shows me demonstrating this first brocade which classically is called Propping Up the Sky. So I'm going to show you the movements first 
And then we'll look at, um, we're going to look at coordinating the breathing as an option. Okay, so have a sense of taking your breath in, breathe out, sink down. And just allow your hands to float up in front of you. And then extend your hands out on, extend your hands out like this as if you're receiving or giving. And then open up. I like to visualize a flower blossoming or opening. And then kind of draw your hands toward each other and then press up. Press up as if you're holding up the sky. And then allow your hands to float down. Let's do it again. Now here we're going to sink down, getting rooted like a plant, a tree, a bush. And then rising up as the hands float up on it, and then extend out and sink down once again, rooting. And then, like a flower reaching for the sun, straighten your body, open up like a blossom, flower blossoming. Hands come a little closer together as you sink down, and then we press up as if we're propping up the sky, lifting up, connecting with the sun, the cosmos, the sky. And then lowering the hands, they're floating down. Now we'll have an option of coordinating the breath. If it feels right for you, work with me on coordinating the breath. So this is an in-breath as we rise up and the hands float up. An out-breath as we sink down and the hands reach out as if giving or receiving. Now an in-breath as we rise up and open up like a flower, opening up to the sun's rays. Now there's an out-breath as we sink down, reconnecting with our roots, and an in-breath as we press up and prop up the sky. And an out-breath as we sink back down and lower the hands. We'll do two more of these without me talking, coordinating the breath if it suits you or just breathing in a flowing way, deep breathing as we do the, as we do the movement. Now just relax for a moment, standing meditation and noticing your energy, your precious energy within your body, around your body. All right. We can be seated if you feel like standing, whatever way to make yourself comfortable at home as, as you're watching this video. Um, this next practice is a self-massage practice and it is remarkable. It's, it's simply hand massage. Um, you've probably heard the phrase wringing our hands. You know, wringing your hands. Usually that's when we're under stress or some sort of distress when we're wringing our hands. But here we are realizing that our hands are microsystems, as well as our ears and our feet. They're microsystems, and we can practice an ancient uh, system called reflexology just by pressing on our palms and at the same time on the back of the hand. You can use the thumb on the palm and the, and the fingers in the back of the hand and just moving with pressure all over the hand. Now. As I said, the hand rep represents 
is a microsystem so that points on the hand, foot and ears, connect energetically with your entire body. Different points to different parts of the body, including all the organs, you know, literally all the parts of the body. You don't have to know which points correspond to what parts of the body. Simply pressing and rubbing all over the hand, all the way up, the thumb, the fingers, both front and back. Works well. And you can also just do the webbing. Let's call it the webbing in between the fingers. And especially the webbing in between the thumb and the index finger corresponds to um, the, the large intestine and has uh, it's probably the most widely massaged part of the hand when we do hand massage and also in acupuncture. So the other thing to remember in doing this massage, hands, ears, or feet, is when you come across a tender part. I have one right here um, on my heel of my hand is to kind of spend a little extra time on the tender parts because it may represent where some energy is contracted or there's some kind of uh, blocked energy in your body. So the idea is not to press so hard that you cause yourself pain but press hard enough that you have a sense that you're really activating that area and could wind up freeing up some energy in other parts of your body. This part right here, for me, a few months ago was like very painful and little by little, as I've done this practice, there's almost no pain there now. So it re uh, represents my kidney system, I believe, here. And I've been paying some attention to my kidneys for certain, certain reasons I won't go into now. But this is a, a sign of progress in that regard. So um, there's a video link underneath what you're looking at right now for hand massage. It's nine minutes long. I really recommend clicking on that and seeing and listening to my teacher, Roger Yonka, sharing about hand massage. I'll go into more detail about the Qigong aspects and the technique and the benefits. So, and it's very portable, obviously, when you're watching television or uh, anything like that, when you're just sort of relaxing and you have a extra time, instead of wringing your hands, massage your hands. It would be good for your whole body. Highly recommended. Okay, I have one more practice to do. Um, could be done sitting or standing. I think I'll stand. It's called Discover Chi. And it is the first movement in a series called the Nine Phases which comprises, my teacher Roger looked at what, what is fundamental about all of Qigong, being that there's thousands of different lineages and schools in China and around the world, and kind of developed and designed those and put them into these nine phases. And hopefully in person in this room, in 2021, we'll have to do the whole sequence. But the first, um, movement, it's very simple as far as the movement goes, uh, it's called Discover Chi, it's kind of a, you'd say a form of standing meditation. And Chi stands for life force energy and Gong stands for cultivation of life force energy. So becoming aware of energy, life force energy or Chi, so often it's just taken for granted. This blessing this gift of the energy that permeates all of life, all our life and all the life in the biosphere, and almost establishing a certain intimacy with the energy itself is something that we can do with Discover Chi, or interacting with Chi, engaging Chi. So our feet are about shoulder width apart or a little wider, and we just let our hands Load up to about belt level, fingertips, thumbs pointing towards one another, palms pointing towards one another. Palms, this center here is an energy gate in Qigong called the human gate. 
and of course hands and arms connecting to the heart the heart you know the center point of the our circulatory system and a center point of our energy system as well so you can think of this as forming um, like currents that are connecting connecting the currents of life within and the movements are simple we're just going to expand and gather just open the hands could be just a little bit like this and then bring the hands closer to one another or or wider is fine too as we do this we're going to put our minds focus and our attention between our palms and just notice it's not important that you feel a sensation more your concentration is of great value here in engaging with the chi but it's also not uncommon to feel a sensation as I said we can think of this as standing meditation so our mind's focus is in the present moment our breathing is flowing in and out gently evenly if we want we can sink down and rise up We can coordinate the breath if we want. In and out. You have a sense of expanding out into the biosphere and gathering energy. Now, just using any or all of that, let's just quietly engage in. engaging chi, discovering chi. and relax. So, this sequence of practices that you could do in as little as 10 minutes, this went a little longer because I'm explaining and, and teaching how they work and some of the benefits and why we go about doing these sorts of practices. Um, so you could do it as a sequence. You can certainly mix them up in terms of order the other thing is if you liked any one of these, you can just kind of pluck it, treat it like a menu, and then just take the one that you like the most on any given day and do that for a minute or two. Uh, those, we can call those momentary methods. Again, to make this accessible, efficient, and effective. So I hope you enjoyed this and you get benefit from these practices. I want to wish you, in general, health, happiness, and deep fulfillment of life. 